see each and every one of you in the house of God on a Wednesday night. I like what Brother Marcus said. Midweek. Midweek service. Amen. We need to be in the house of God in the middle of the week. Amen. Amen. What if we were to come to church every night? Would you be here? Praise God and thank all of you for showing up. For the sick faithful people that come in here on Wednesday nights. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My wife says there's a lot of people that are celebrating uh, graduation. And some people are sick in body. And wherever you're at, I hope that the Lord touches your bodies. Amen. Amen. But tonight I do want to open up with the word of God here concerning the times that we are living in. Amen. Because we are living in some difficult times right now. The things, people, I have to share this, and I don't know how you guys pay attention to the news, but things are getting worse in Washington. Mm -hmm. They really are, people. Our leaders, our leaders have no backbone to do what is right in the sight of God. You know, they're giving in to one another, they're fighting, they're fussing, they're, they're striving with one another. The Republicans, the Democrats, the House and the Senate, the Congress, everything is all jacked up and one. We need to start praying for, the, for our leadership. The world is laughing at us, people. And we're supposed to be the strongest nation. And we call ourselves the United Nations, the United States. Amen? So keep praying for this country. Keep praying for your leaders. Keep praying that the hand of God falls down upon this nation. Continue to protect us from any harm, danger, abuse, or anything. I was reading a report because... As you probably guys know what took place with Israel and the Palestinians and Hamas and everything that is going on. I was reading this report that this was only a test. This was only a test in order for Russia, in order for Iran and Syria and all the enemies of Israel to find out how strong Israel was. Mm -hmm. So they're preparing themselves to attack Israel again. It's not only going to be Hamas. It's going to be other nations that are going to come. But you know what? It says in the word that God has the last word. Mm -hmm. God will protect Israel. Amen? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people right now that are not, don't believe and protect. We even have leaders in Congress that are not hating. They want to stop the aid to Israel. Mm -hmm. So we have to. We have to continue, people, to pray not only for Israel, but to pray for this world. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because we are going through some difficult times. Amen. But I want to share some couple of scriptures concerning the, the teaching here tonight. Amen. And the title of the message is Surviving Through Difficult Times. Amen. Because we've all been there at one time or another. And maybe you're going through some difficult times right now. Maybe you just don't know which way to go. Maybe you don't know which way or what door to open to come out of these issues. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I want to reassure you for the word of God that the word of God is it's real, people, and it's true. You have to believe in the Word of God. You have to put your faith in God. You have to put your faith in the Word. Amen? And we have to trust in the Word of God. In the book of Jeremiah, if you have your Bibles here tonight, turn over to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. Amen? Very familiar verse. Jeremiah 29. Verse 11 is this, for I know the thoughts. In other words, people, God knows everything about us. You know, God knows everything about us. You know that God already knows you before you think it? That he already knows what you're thinking? Amen? This is why he's saying, look, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. The thoughts that he thinks towards us. I wonder what God is really thinking about each and every person that is here right now. Think about this, people. What do you think God is thinking about you? You know, it's like my wife was saying, you know, it's time for us to start renewing our minds. Our minds should have been renewed from the first day that we accepted Jesus Christ. Amen? But from time to time, we let go of this new mind that we're supposed to have. We're supposed to really be, start thinking about what God is saying to each and every one of us. Amen? He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. That's the first thing that he's thinking about. How many 
people need a little bit of peace in their life right now. Amen? We all need peace in our life. We need peace in our homes, in our marriages, in our workplace, even in the church. We need peace with one another. Amen? Let that song go with you. Let there be peace on earth, but let it begin with me. You know, if everybody was to walk in peace, you know, if everybody was to walk in peace, we would all be in peace. Amen? Amen. But you have to break. You have to break those thoughts. You have to break those ways. The word of God says in the book of Matthew, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. They give you a future and a hope. You know that there's hope in our future right now, people? Because hope is the evidence of things hoped for in the near future. Amen? Amen. He says, Then you will call upon me. Then you will call upon me. Then you will go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You know that the Lord also has an open mind, an open ear, and an open heart to hear your prayers? Mm -hmm. huh? You know that we can all pray at the same time, and He knows how to shuffle our prayers around? <laughs> huh? and he knows us. He knows our thoughts, like the Word of God says. He knows us. And me and my wife are praying. If everybody's praying in this place, God is already sitting out. Oh, I hear your prayer. I hear your prayer. I hear your prayer. Amen. So we have, we have a good heart. We have a God that will hear your prayers. Amen. He says, then you will call upon me. Then you will go, it says, and pray to me. And I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. And when you search for me with all of your heart, I will be found by you. Thank you, Lord. That's assurance, people, that when you're going through some things, that you can go and pray. Guess what? He's going to listen to what you're praying about. Because God has an open ear and a big ear. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because he wants to give us a good future, people. How many people want a good future? Amen. How many people are banking on the word of God? Amen. Amen. I know that I am, people. You know, I, I don't want to settle for what I am at. I want God to do more things with me and through me. Look, I'm talking for myself. Amen. I'm talking about this church, this ministry, our home, our marriage, our relationship with our family members sons and daughters and grandkids. Amen. I want to have a relationship with everybody or for everywhere that I go. I want to be at peace with people. Amen. Amen. It's an ugly feeling to have to go when you have to go and no, when you have to go somewhere and you really don't want to be there. Amen. But you're going to have to be that example of the God that is in you in order for you to walk in peace. Amen. Amen. Let me repeat verse 12 again. He says, then you will call upon me, and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. He says, and you will seek me, and find me, when you search for me with all of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. No, with all of your heart. Yes, Lord. Amen. You know, that's a blessing. Oh, my God, people. You know, for us, you know, God wants to be found by us. He's not playing hide and seek. Like we used to. We already know how to call on God. <laughs> if, you, if you seek Him, you shall find Him. Amen. Now turn over to the book of Matthew. In the book of Matthew, chapter 6, starting in verse 30, 33, says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. He says, Therefore, do not worry. Tell somebody, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Is the word of God in you? Yes. So is the word of God in you? Yes. Is the word of God grounded, planted, and rooted in you? Yes. Then tell somebody again, don't worry. Don't worry. In other words, people, no te mortifiques. No te preocupes. And Jesus is speaking to the disciples because the disciples are worried about some things. They're not really sure. Should I continue to follow this man? Look, I just met him two years ago and he wants me to follow him. He wants me to do this, do this. No, I'm a religious person here. I'm a religious Jew. Amen. But the word of God is saying this, look, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. You know, 
why you sell it to tomorrow? Because you may not see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You live for today. You're hoping for tomorrow. Because yesterday is gone. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day has its own problems. Amen? Sometimes people, we have a tendency, and I know this happens to all of us. We worry about this, we worry about this. All these little things that we worry about. And the Lord says, cast your cares and all your anxiety towards me. Why? Because he cares for you. What part of that word don't you believe? That he cares for you, this that God is going to see you through in everything that you're going through. Because we've all been through some stuff. We've all had issues in life. Amen? We have to go back. It's like my wife was saying, has your mind been renewed? How much of your mind has been renewed that you should know this word, stand on this word, believe in this word, have enough faith in this word, and trust in this word? Amen? This word is real, people. No, this word is real. Amen? It's greater and bigger than your insurance policy. That's right. That's right. The insurance policy, man, man, I tell you, this is insurance for life. That's right. Amen? And guess what? You don't even have to pay the premium. That's right. You know why? Because God already paid the price on Calvary. Right. The price has been paid, so why do you worry? Why do we worry about such things? Why do you worry about what's going to happen tomorrow? Why do you worry about this, this, and that? Just get up and do it. Do what needs to be done in life, people. Amen. Just walk through it and be diligent with yourself. Amen? you got to follow through in life and everything. There's a lot of issues that are going to rise up. Maybe tomorrow you'll have a new issue. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month, at the end of the year, like I always say from time to time. You don't know what's going to happen from January 1st to December 31st. But guess what? God's going to show up because He's always showing up on time. Amen. Amen. So we have to renew ourselves, people, our minds and our hearts, our way, the ways that we think, our attitude, our conduct. Everything about being renewed has to be renewed. Man, let that old man go, the old flesh go. Amen. Quit thinking about yesterday. Amen. You're not there anymore. Don't you know that God wants to do a new thing? Why? Don't you know that God wants to do a new thing? somebody. He's going to do a new thing. He's going to do a new thing. See, you just make confession. Amen. Now you're believing that he's going to do a new thing. Right. Amen? Amen? He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day its own troubles. Amen? Now in Matthew 7, chapter, verse 7, it says, ask. No, ask. And it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will what? It will be open. You know that those are three promises from the Lord himself to the people of God? He says, look, for everyone, tell somebody, everyone. 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 Amen. Everyone who has receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Amen? Do you believe that? Yeah. Oh, this is Jesus speaking to us here tonight. Look, I'm only the messenger, people. I know that there's some things in my life that I want God to do for, for me, for my wife, our home, our household, the church's ministry. Look, we're, we're praying and believing that God's going to continue to expand and keep these doors open. Amen? But I'm not going to be begging God. Even the word of God said, I have not seen the righteous forsaken right. or my seed begging for bread. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm not going to go begging God. The Lord says, ask, and I'm asking, Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord says, seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open. I'm begging on those three words right now. Mm -hmm. Ask, seek, and knock, people. Yes. Amen. Amen. He says, for everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Or well, what man is there among you, if his sons ask him for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who do what? Ask him. It doesn't 
doesn't take much people to ask the Lord. Amen? He's got an open ear, people. He's got a big ear. He's got a big heart. God is a good God. No, God is a good God. And He's a gracious God. Guess what? And He's also a giving God. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father. He says, Therefore, it says, Whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. I turn over to the book of Mark, chapter 11. I want to give you some scripture here tonight to encourage all of you. Amen? So that this word and the seed we get into you. Amen? In the book of Mark, chapter 11, starting in verse 20, it says, Now in the morning, as they were passing by, they saw the fig tree that was dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you have cursed has withered away. Amen? So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. No, have faith in God. Well, this is Jesus speaking to the people. Have faith in God. Man, I can tell you this, people. You know, and how many people can really say you have faith in God? Do you waver with your faith? Don't waver with your faith. Don't start believing, asking, seeking, and knocking for something, and then two or three days later, a fear comes in. Where's your faith in God then? No, where's your faith in God then? Amen? Amen. We gotta continue to hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's like the word of God says, we gotta fight that good fight of faith. Amen. 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 Amen? We have to continue to hold on to the word of God. This is for as surely he says, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. And does not doubt in his heart. You know that every time you pray, don't use the word if. Don't use the word if when you're praying. I don't know. What if? What if God doesn't answer a prayer? What are we going to do? Now you're doubting. Now you're putting. Now you're putting fear instead of faith. You're erasing your faith and you're allowing fear to come in. Amen. He says, "For I surely I say to you that whoever says to this mountain." Be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes. No, but believes. But believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. These are the kind of prayers that we pray people that we're going through some difficult times in life. Amen. Don't be don't be afraid to pray and ask God. Amen. It's like I said, he's got a big ear, people. He says, therefore, he says to you, says, whatever things, no, whatever things, I don't care what you're praying for and what you're praying about. If you're praying and God has an open ear to hear, guess what? He's going to answer it. You know the thing about prayer? You know what it is, people? That people get too impatient with God. Because we want our prayers answered now. We want microwave answers. That's what we're looking for. And sometimes God will cause you to wait. You know why it causes you to wait? To see where your faith is at. To see if you're really, really believing in His Word. And guess what? He does that to test your faith. Amen? Amen. Have you ever been tested by God? I know that I have. Not only once and twice, but a lot of times the Lord has tested my faith to believe. I don't wait with with my faith. If I'm praying and believing for something, I'm going to stand on it till I receive the promise. And that's what you have to do, people. And don't go around, you know, telling other people about your prayers and this and that. They may not believe the way you believe. They may, they may even bring doubt and fear into your life. Mm -hmm. But where's your God now? Mm -hmm. yeah. I tell you what, God has shown up on, on in our life, people, like you would never believe. Amen? Mm -hmm. Seriously, people, I'll tell you what. Can I give you guys a testimony? Yes. yes. Huh? What? A couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, people, seriously, people, when I was out of work and I wasn't working, and I hadn't worked for months, and pretty soon I couldn't even pay my mortgage, and then I started getting letters, and then they told me, they told me this, look, if we don't get, if we don't get a certain amount of dollars because I was back two, three months of rent you know, my mortgage, you know what, we're going to evict you, we're going to take your house away, we're going to do this, this, and that. And you know what? 
I'm at work and I'm getting this phone call. Mm. And I'm saying, oh my God, and I'm sitting there waiting and believing. And I'm and and, and, and then to top it off, I'm at a church. Remodeling a church. And I'm standing, <laughs> guess what? On holy ground. <laughs> and I'm sitting down on a stack of drywall. And the, my foreman comes up to me and he's looking at me and he says, Mommy, what's wrong with you? He says, you're never like this, but he saw my face that I was sad. And you know, what am I going to do? I got to 5 o'clock and they're going to foreclose on us. And I didn't want to tell him I was too embarrassed. So that guy comes up to me and his name was Mike. He says, Bob, he says, what's wrong with you? I said, no, you got to tell me what's wrong with you. And I told him the story. After I told him what was going on, he said, look, I want you to come to my house after work. I'm going to give you the $5,000 that you need. Wow. That quick, the Lord answered my prayer. Wow. That quick, the Lord answered my prayer. <laughs> I got out of work at 2.30, go over to his house, pick up the $5,000 in cash, went to Western Union, in, uh, Western Union, the, the thing there, called the, the people at the house, <laughs> They stopped the foreclosure on us. I came home, and then and then and then I told him, says when he gave me the cash, I said, you don't want to do I'm gonna pay you back in two weeks. I'm not gonna get five thousand dollars. True story, people. True story. Went back and said, my God, I said, I'm not gonna pay him back in two weeks. So I went back to work and I'm thinking. And then that following day, I get a phone call from another brother in Christ. I tell you what, the Lord was just setting me up. <laughs> and we were going through some difficult times, weren't we? This was more than two years ago. And I tell you what, oh my God, <laughs> I got a phone call. He says, Bob, he says, what are you doing? I says, I'm at work. Listen, we got a side job for you to do. <laughs> he says, really, what is it? He says, well, I want you to come down so and so and so and so. So I go down to the building. I, I look at the building, and, and he says, what do you want to do here? He said, we're going to remodel this whole place. He said, well, I need all the lighting, all the power, and everything done. It's a 5,000 square foot building. And I said, well, he said, he said how much do you think it will cost? He says, I don't know. He says, I don't know. I can't even give you a bid. He said, here, here's the whole people cart. Go and get everything that you need to start this job. He says, do you need any money? <laughs> I says, can I get an advancement? He says, how much do you need? I says, I need five thousand dollars. He says, come down to the office and I'll write you a check. Amen. That's the Lord. Who does that? Who does it? Nobody but God. But see, I kept my faith in God and I didn't waver. I says, Lord, Lord, Lord. And I tell you what, well, I got so many testimonies, people. Oh, what God has done in our lives. Oh my God, people. God has been so good. That's why I'm saying, whatever you ask, He shall give to you. See, and I, I, wasn't, in, I wasn't asking for my own desires. I wanted to save my home, mm -hmm. our household, I mean. Thank you. Man, we have been evicted before all that, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to go through the same thing again. Mm -hmm. And this time I had more faith than you would never believe me. <laughs> Be careful how you uh, 
share your everything with. Don't be so quick to open up your heart to everybody. Because everybody may not have the same faith that you have. Amen? Amen? You guys hear me? Yes, amen. Okay. It says, be answered for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With what? With thanksgiving. You know, you should be thanking God already for the, for the promise. Thank Him ahead of time. I thank you, Father God, that you have fulfilled your promise to me, Father God. I thank you for getting me out of this hole. Thank you for healing my mind and my heart, our relationship. I thank you for healing my marriage. I thank you for giving me a new job. I thank you for giving me a raise. I thank you for I just thank you, Lord. You can't begin to all thank God. You know, sometimes I'm looking for a, a, a bigger and better word than thank. What is, what is there a better word than thank? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> oh, Pastor Martin said, God says, that's for the second service. <laughs> a bilingual one. <laughs> Amen. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, he says, let your request be known unto God. Don't be ashamed to pray to God. To ask him what you need in life. Did he say, I came to give you life? And to give it to you more abundantly? Mm -hmm. huh? Didn't he say that? Mm -hmm. And just ask him, people. He says, in the peace of God, do we ever need peace? Mm -hmm. We need the peace of God in our lives every single day of our lives, people. When the issues of, of life rise up, people, and all hell's breaking up in your home, mom, your familia, at work, or even in church, whatever's going on, man, I tell you what, we need the peace of God more than ever now. We really do. Amen? Amen. You know, the stuff that is like the word of God says in Matthew, blessed are the peacemakers. You know what's more greater than the peacemakers? Peacekeeper. What's it going to take to keep the peace? You can make peace with somebody, but what's it going to take to keep it? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. I tell you what, we need the peace of God more in our lives, people. This is why it's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Go back and do a study in the fruits of the Spirit. Where is your life lacking? What is it that you need from God? Do you need more love? Do you need to show more love? Do you need more joy in your life? Or peace? Or kindness? Or goodness? Or, or be a little merciful towards people. Amen? Or a little bit of humbleness. Amen? Or maybe we need a, not a little, but I think we need a lot more self we need to learn how to control our minds and our tongues, people. Amen. Amen. Are you guys awake? I'm going to bring up my horn. <laughs> do it. What he said, do it. Wake you up. Amen. But let me read verse 7 again. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts in your minds through Christ Jesus. Sometimes we don't understand people. No. Sometimes we don't understand people. Amen. Why do people act the way they do? Amen. We can't be so quick to judge people, condemn people because of the way they act. Don't act like that. Be who you are in Christ. Amen. You say you have a mind of Christ? How come we're not minding Christ? We sure is quiet here. Amen. 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 Well, that was just an introduction to the teaching here tonight. Amen. I want all of you to turn over to the book of Romans, chapter 8. We are going to be talking about surviving through difficult times in life. Amen. Amen. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, starting in verse 18, he says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, he says, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be what? Revealed in there's something that God is going to reveal to us, people. But 
the things that we're going through right now in this present time, they're not worthy. Why do we worry anyways? Huh? Seriously, people, why do we worry about so many things in life? Why do we worry about so many things in life? When all you have to do is have the peace of God in you? You know that if everybody in your home had the peace of God, you would be at peace? Amen? Amen. Then why do we worry about so many things? Huh? Yeah. And Paul is saying, consider. Think about what you're saying and doing before you say it. Amen? Because you don't know how you're going to make that person feel. Too many people are ready to flesh out just to get it out of them. Amen? And that's not right, people. We should try to hold back our tongues. Amen? James talks about the tongue. It may be a little member of uh, it may be a little member in your body, but the things that it can do, people, and the things that it can say, you know that you can encourage somebody or discourage them. You can build them up or you can tear them down with your tongue and what comes out of the heart. Amen? Amen? Amen. He says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time, it says, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be what? Reveal in us. Amen. Thank you, Father. Nine. Verse 27. It says, Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Amen. Do you believe that God can search out your heart? Yes. Don't you want God to search out your heart? Don't you got don't you want God to, to sift out your heart? Huh? Wouldn't you just want to walk in love everywhere you go? Don't you want to be at peace with everybody? You don't want to think the worst about people, do you? I know that I don't. But sometimes when things do rise up, that's the first thing that happens to us. Our flesh gets involved. Our mind gets involved. Amen? But we need to start searching out our hearts to see what is really in our heart. Is this living God in us? No, is it? Think about all this, people. Amen? It goes for me, too. When, when I was reading all this, I said, Lord, man, you know what? If I have to make some changes, you know what? And it doesn't, listen to me, you guys, okay? It doesn't happen overnight. Your changes aren't going to take place overnight. you got to work at it. you got to start pulling those things out of your heart. The things that we think towards people. The things that we act. Because the way you think, that's the way it's going to come back to you. Amen? You reap what you sow, people. Amen? So don't you want to have a good heart? A happy heart? No. It says, now he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit. Because why? Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of who? According to the will of God, people. Amen? And we know, here it comes, people. And we know that all things somebody all people it's like everything amen and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God oh my god people we can take that verse right there to heart and really bank on that no and really bank on it and live by it and walk by it and talk by it you know how much more happier you would be you know how much more at peace you would be amen for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to what? His purpose. Listen to me, people. We have purpose here on this earth. We've been called to do something for God as a believer, as a born-again believer. We have been called to do something for the Lord. We have purpose. Amen. And if you don't know what that purpose is, start seeking the Word. Start seeking the Lord. Start asking the Lord, Lord, what is my purpose now that I'm in the body of Christ? Huh? Don't you know that you were born with talents? Huh? Those hidden gifts that are in us as believers. And God wants to start bringing those things out of you. Little by little by little by little. Amen. I remember the first time, people, when I became an usher for the first time. I didn't want to be an usher. Amen. But I tell you what, little by little by little by little, you know what? It, it became natural to me. 
and never knew, never knew. See, when you're faithful with a little thing, then God will reward you with a bigger thing. Amen. I was an usher. My wife was a, a hostess at the church. We would love to come to church. Man, we would look forward to Wednesday nights. You know, Sunday mornings, breaking bread with all the people, fellowship, man. We know so many people. Amen. And, and I thank God that, that he brought us up the way he did. You know, little by little, not knowing that one day, one day, one day, one day. See, you don't know what's going to happen to all of you. You don't know. You guys don't know what's going to happen. You don't know that one of these days you'll be standing behind you. Preaching, pastoring the church. We had no clue that we were going to be doing all that. We didn't ask for this. God brought us in. Amen? Mm -hmm. And I thank God that He did it the way He did. And we never had a problem serving in the, in the church. We never had a problem. We, we, we just felt obligated to God first. You know, we saw it as God's house, God's people. The pastor being the senior pastor. I'm not talking about myself serving our pastor. Faithfully. Huh? We were faithful to our pastors. I tell you what, when you're faithful with other little things, people. Oh my God. Look, we're not trying to puff ourselves up. I'm just trying to help some people in here. Amen. Amen. He says, For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to a his purpose, amen, for, for whom he foreknew, see, foreknew, in the book of Jeremiah says, we knew when you were in your mother's womb, can you imagine how powerful God is, that he knows what's in your mother's womb, that you would come out the way you are, amen, when he foreknew you, he also predestined, amen, I thank God that, you know, if, if God was to show you your future right now, I bet you there'd be a lot of people taking advantage of it. You would take advantage of it. You would. Because the Lord of God, I already know what God's going to do. Five years from now, I'm going to be the senior pastor. Five years from now, they're going to call me Apostle Bob. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter four. Always caring about, oh my God, people. Always caring about, 
in the body, the dying of our Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Amen. You know that everybody that's sitting here right now represents who Jesus Christ is. That's right. No. Jesus Christ is living in you? No, is Jesus Christ living in you? Yes. 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 Then act like Christ. <laughs> Amen. Be trusted.
Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews. And I give you two seconds to get it. Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 35. Again, look at what he's telling us. Therefore, he says, do not cast away your what? Your confidence. You know what your confidence is, people? Well, it's your assurance. It's knowing that you know that you know that you know that you know. That you know that you know that you know that you know. Si sabes, si se puede. You know that you can. Amen? Because you got confidence in yourself. Amen? Don't lose that confidence. Don't lose that assurance. Don't lose that self-reliance that's upon you. Amen? Because you can do it. Doesn't the word of God say that we can do all things? Through Christ. Through Christ. Who do what? Who gives us the strength. Amen? Verse 35. Amen? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. It says, therefore, it says, do not cast away your confidence. In other words, people, he's commanding us not to throw it away. How many people are willing to throw away your confidence? Huh? How sure are you for yourself? Are you sure about yourself? Yeah. I have a lot of confidence in a lot of things that I can do a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I don't know how to do. But if they teach me, I have enough confidence to believe that I can learn how to do it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We can all do it. He says, do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. He says, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, that's what my wife was talking about, walking in the will of God, you may receive what? Promise. And this book is not a secret book, people. God left us an open book. Every word that's in this book is of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, given to man. Now man, these apostles, Paul and all these apostles and all these people that died. You know, there was a lot of people that died to make this book. They died so we could be. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Amen. 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 He said, but for a little while, yet for a little while, and he who is coming will come, and he will not tarry. Amen. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Now the just, here it comes, people. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. You know who the just people are? People who are grounded, rooted people. People who are walking in righteousness. People who believe, who have enough faith, who have enough trust in God to believe. Amen? Amen. You won't be moved, people, if you walk in those areas. If you walk by the word of God, you won't be moved. That's what the word of God tells us, look. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. That's right. Well, plain and simple. So you'll know when the enemy is at hand, people. No, you will know when the enemy comes in. You will sense it. You will discern it. He says, but now, he says, the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in it. I don't know about you, people, but I don't want to make God. Imagine how the Lord must feel when born again, spirit filled, come talking, water walking Christians, backslide. Oh. Yeah. You think that we're grieving the heart of God? Mm -hmm. He tells us right there, He has no pleasure in that. Man, don't you want to please God? Yes. Huh? Yeah. He knows that we're carnal, He knows that we're flesh, and He knows that sometimes we'll stumble and fall. But mm -hmm. you know what? We got a good, gracious God that He will forgive us. For his mercy and for his grace and his love that he has for us. Amen? Amen. But see, I, I don't know, you know, we've been serving the Lord for a long, long time, people. I don't I don't know how anybody that can claim to say that they're born again can backslide after knowing the word. 
Huh? How can you? How can you walk away? You know, like they always say, don't bite the hand that beats you. How can you walk away from the God that beats you? Huh? How can you walk away from the God that one day you're going to see him face to face? How? What are we going to do when we face the Lord? Face to face. No, what are we going to do? Huh? And I want to be able to hear those beautiful words, well done, my good and faithful servant. You may come in, you may sit at my table, you may sup with me. In fact, I'm going to serve you. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and he did serve us. He served us through his flesh. He gave us his flesh for us. Amen. How much more are you willing to do for God now that you know that you know that you know that you know? Mm -hmm. What are you willing to do? Amen? Mm -hmm. That's why I asked you, is God in you? Yes. 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 Oh, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> There's going to be some people that want to get blessed here. Amen. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. You're going to take this teaching here tonight and you're going to apply it to your life. Amen. I know that I'm, I'm going to apply it, man. I tell you what I read and I read and I read. I said, oh my God, this is good, Lord. I've got to share this with the people. You, you brought me a message, and I'm your messenger, whether they receive it or not. I mean, I'm important. I got it. I got it. Somebody, I got it. 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 Oh, yeah, that's I got it. Okay, you're too late. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Some people condemn them, some people can persecute. Oh my God, this brother went to hell and 